Good morning. It is Tuesday, March 31st. The title of this morning's devotional is The Sin of Ahab and Jezebel. The passage is in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. That passage ends with this verse. And it came to pass that when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, and to possess it. So what is occurring in this passage? We see that uh, King Ahab spots a piece of property adjacent to his that he thinks, wow, I could build me a garden in that property. It'd be really nice. So he approaches his neighbor and he offers him either to trade for a better piece of property that King Ahab had, or he would give him money. Seems like a fair deal. Surprisingly, Naboth said no. Ahab was not expecting this at all. He went home and he sulked. Why would Naboth do this? Well, he was not enticed by money. He was being obedient to the Word of God. You see, in the Word of God, in Leviticus 25, verse 23, we read, The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. This is God speaking. And God is telling the children of Israel, I don't want you to sell your land because what he knew is that he knew there'd be a situation to where someone would be in trouble. They would need money. They would sell their land. Well, now that they have sold their land, they have no place to run their herds, no place to grow their crops. And so they would be worse off and they would end up enslaving one another with that structure. So God set it up to where they would always have land. Always have a place for their herds. Always have a place to grow things. They would not slip into poverty. They would not lord over one another. This is also echoed in Numbers 36, verses 7 and 9. In Ezekiel 46, 18, it says, Moreover, the prince shall not take the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession. So you see, the Word of God is very clear on this subject matter, and Naboth was um, upholding what God said, even though Ahab apparently was oblivious to it. He was concerned about creating a garden for himself. Now think about that imagery. He's trying to create what God had created in the very beginning, as if he's playing God himself. His wife sees him sulking. This is the infamous Jezebel. When she hears that Naboth would not sell the property, she sends a man to take care of him. And in so taking care of her husband and getting him what he wanted. So, King Ahab violated God by trying to get a child of God to sell his land. And now we see Jezebel is going to violate the word of God by having a man killed. Now you're familiar that this is the one of the Ten Commandments and uh, murder is not right. But that didn't stop her from trying to please her husband. And so these are one of, this is one of the acts that uh, earned her the reputation she had. The other part of this that is rather interesting is in Ezekiel 18.4, it says, Behold, all souls are mine. So she now was not only violating one of the Ten Commandments, as she was taking from God something that did not belong to her, and that was another person's life. Sometimes... I don't think we see ourselves as necessarily bad people, yet we almost mirror some of their sins. King Ahab, there was something he wanted. He wanted it very, very bad, and he coveted this. Jezebel thought that she could take a life. You might think, well, wait a minute, I've never murdered. 
Have you ever been in a situation where someone's told you what to do and you have reacted either verbally or in your, in your mind thought, it's my life, I can do whatever I want? You see, the Word of God says it's not our lives, that all lives, all souls belong to Him. And if that's true, then I'm a steward of what God has given me. So if I'm a steward and I need to take care of what God has given me, that means I'm going to answer to Him. We call that the judgment. At the end of this life, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will give an account. Some the white throne judgment, some the bema seat. We'll give an account of what we've done in this body. If we have rejected Christ, then we'll be separated from Him forever in a place called hell. If we have accepted Him and realized that all souls belong to Him, and I'm a steward of what God has given me, and so therefore I'm a servant of the God Most High, then I will be like Naboth, and I will obey him, I will see his word as beneficial, and I will do it. You might say, but I may end up just like Naboth. Yes, that's true, because when you do what's right, people will get upset. But I want to encourage you to do what's right, that you might have a name like Naboth, that you might be a servant of the Most High God, one that truly represents things that are godly. May God bless you. I hope that uh, you are being enriched by these videos. Please subscribe and uh, make comments. I appreciate it. God bless.